The Opus Guardian 6000 is a perfect companion for your home transfer switch and has an impressive amount of app control to customize your power use. I have the Guardian 6000 set up with my manual transfer switch. Now the 6000 is a 240 volt capable unit and in a power outage it can deliver up to 6000 watts of power at 240 volts and 3600 watts of power at 120 volts. My transfer switch can utilize 240 volt split phase. It's a six circuit 30 amp switch. It allows one side of the split phase to power three circuits and the other side to power the other three circuits. I could have a 240 volt circuit set to take power from the 6000 through these two 20 amp breakers and then have four 15 amp circuits. I can also use all six circuits separately with the available 240 volts. That's how I have it wired right now. We have the L14 running up to the transfer switch and every switch is on. You can see my little orange light there. That means I'm getting both legs of the power out of the 240. So let's go see what we can do. Right now, I'm pulling 610 watts. So a big part of that 600 and something, 550 now watts is this giant LCD TV. That is not very efficient. And my stereo system down there. I also have my refrigerator on. And now let's see if we can start the microwave. Get that going. All right. So now we are pulling 2,349 watts. I'm gonna have someone turn on a hair dryer upstairs. Go ahead. All right, we're at 3,000 watts. Turn it to high. 3,630 watts. Let me turn this on low. I'm now at 4,500 watts. And this light in here is also pulling off this. I don't know if this will do it. 5,000 watts just through my transfer switch. I'm gonna go ahead and call this a successful test of 240 volts through the transfer switch. So that's 240 volts into my switch, but what about 120 volts? The 6000 has a 30 amp 120 volt RV plug. It's a TT30. It's capable of delivering the 3600 watts from the 6000's inverter through my transfer switch with an adapter cable just like this. This allows me to put 30 amps of 120 volts into my system. Now why would I choose this? Well, like almost all 240 volt systems of this size, if you're charging in 120 volts or even 240 volts, you're not able to output at 240 volts. That means in order to take advantage of the 20 millisecond EPS function at 2400 watts, you would need to output at 120 volts, and the RV plug is capable and covered under the EPS protection. Only have two of the circuits on right now, mainly because we just, I mean, we can't do almost 6,000 watts on the 220 volts. It's really limited to 2400 watts with the EPS. Okay, we're back with the entertainment system and of course the light on. Microwave's back on, entertainment's on. We're looking at 2000 watts. Again, a couple hundred lower than the max. So the main thing that I'm trying to do with these two circuits is to kind of maximize my solar input and the use of the battery and just kind of shave, if you will, the power that these two circuits with these big television, microwave, and refrigerator, um, like run all those from solar. There's a way that I can do this in the app that I'll talk about in a minute that really helps me to do this in a way that protects my electronics and allows me to get maximum solar usage out of the 800 watts of solar input that I have. Let me go over a couple of the new features in the Clinergy app. The general interface doesn't look that much different than any other Opus product, but the settings are where things really expand. Right off the bat, you can adjust the rate of AC charge from 200 to 1800 watts at 120 volt input, or 400 to 3600 watts at 240 volt input. You can adjust various timeouts and sounds, but the part I want to focus on is down toward the bottom. In energy management, you can set the charge and discharge limits. Some people never want their power station to go below 10% or charge over 90%, and you can select those limits here. Now below that, you can also select how much of your power is from the grid and how much is from solar. I have mine set up that if I'm charging by grid, it will stop at 70%. Anything over 70% will be from solar. 
And if the state of charge drops below 70%, then the unit will charge from both grid and solar. Below energy management is another major feature, scheduled tasks. When you create a task, you name it and you set the time it will be active, and then you can select from an array of functions from AC charging, to solar charging, to grid or battery priority, and more. So let me show you the power of scheduled tasks. I wanna do two things. I wanna protect my sensitive electronics from brownouts. I've had two brownouts in the last couple of weeks, and these are terrible for electronics when the voltage drops that low. So I wanna power them from my battery through my transfer switch. Also, I wanna use as much solar power as possible. However, without more panels and more batteries, I won't be able to keep things going 24 seven. I'm going to need some grid power. So this is how I have things set up to accomplish this. First, I only want the grid to charge up to 70%. That less 30% will be solar only. Second, I wanna set when my solar charges based on specific times. I can take solar from when the sun comes up until about 4.30 in the afternoon when my yard gets shaded or in the winter at 3.30 in the afternoon when it gets shaded. Now finally, I wanna make sure I top off up to 70% after the sun has gone down. So I set it to take grid power from 4.30 until midnight. I'll use batteries throughout the rest of the night and then recharge again with solar each morning. So I give ample time for solar to charge if the weather is good and then allow grid power to top things off up to 70% at night and then I use the battery power again until the next day. My electronics are never exposed to brownouts. Another simpler task you can set up is your power priority so you can do peak shaving. You can set when you want to give the grid the priority and when you want to give the battery the priority. This means you can tell the 6000 that during times of high demand when it costs more for power, it should use the stored battery power. And then later when the cost of power is less, you'd be able to recoup the battery power by charging off the grid. And you can do this without any solar input at all. What about solar input? Opus has improved their MPPT. The Guardian automatically detects any solar input over 12 volts and turns on to charge and turns off when the solar input drops below 12 volts whenever it gets dark. Let me show you how this works. Currently have one of the 100 watt portable panels from Opus set up and my multimeter is showing that in the sun it is putting out about 23 volts. So I'm gonna set this up and we're gonna simulate nightfall by simply closing my garage door. Closing the garage door. All right, you can see the voltage now. It says seven volts, seven volts. Let's see what happens when I plug seven volts into the solar input of the Guardian 6000. So there's no solar input, it's under 12 volts. Now, let's go ahead and raise that garage door again and watch it kick on. Now we're above seven volts and solar is starting to take in some wattage. Won't be very much because this is a, you know, 100 watt panel. But there you can see, under 12 volts, no solar input. Over 12 volts, we get solar input. The Guardian 6000 is pretty perfect for home backup and the new features on the app make it even better. So what does it cost? Well, the launch price actually depends on you. There's a link in the description where you can subscribe and get an email letting you know when the Guardian 6000 is released. For every person that subscribes, the launch price drops by 15 cents. If 5,000 people subscribe, the launch price will be $1,699. Currently, we have 3,660 subscribers, and so the price is right at $1,900. So follow the link in the description and make sure you subscribe. And if you wanna see more videos about the new Guardian 6000, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. How would you use the Guardian 6000? What would you power? Go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm Scott, I'm a fan of the Guardian 6000. I make other videos just like this over at my own channel, and you can check them out at Scott Link Media. And I'll see you on the next one.